Quiet down, quiet down, people. Good evening. Welcome to this year's AMI program. My name is Marlon Foster, and I will be graduating this semester with a bachelor's in middle grade education. So give me a hand. So I would like to welcome all students, staff, faculty, and guests to our African American Male Initiative program today. As always, AMI strives to provide programming that uplifts all members of the GSW family through its motto, academic excellence and social responsibility. We will only take a little of your time, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the program. Again, welcome and enjoy. Good afternoon. A little over four months ago, four months ago, I decided to come to Georgia Southwestern because when I first visited, I was welcomed with kindness and love, not just from the people, but the environment as a whole. And it was at that time that I could see myself growing as a student and a man in, at this institution. This first semester, I've learned that my education is the most important thing in my life right now. Prioritizing my time and managing is a full-time job as well as going to college. Although I've only been here one semester, I, observed, I have observed the pitfall that comes with being out of my own as a young man, from away from, a young man away from home trying to fit in, in a different environment. I surely will be tested by my professors, but the test that I will get from my peers and life in general will determine my character and overall success. With the motivation and leadership of AAMI, I am staying here and I will graduate. Staying here and graduating from a boy to an educated man with a bright future. I'm on my way, and you see an example of this here today. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Taylor, Jr., and I'll be graduating this semester with a bachelor's in dramatic arts, emphasis in communications and media arts, as well as a minor in history. <laughs> In addition to that, just some of the things that I've done on campus, I'm a part of the National Honor Theater Society, Alpha Psi Omega. In addition to that, I'm currently a student government association senator. I blanked out, so if you guys need anything, this is my final week heading term if you guys have anything you need it done. But I'm here, most importantly, to introduce the speaker today. Our speaker today is an America's Georgia native who received his BA degree in political science from Morehouse College his MA degree from Michigan State University, and his postgraduate leadership certificates from Georgia State University. He has an extensive career in education that includes the following. As a teacher, assistant principal, and a principal, as a coordinator and site manager, as well as finally an instructor. Our speaker has an extensive resume for professional experience and a community service, but I'll just name a few. He is a chairman, housing authority for City of Americas, and he is on the Sumter County Board of Education. Excuse me, he is on the Sumter Board, Sumter County Board of Equalization. This is a very small resume to, of our speaker's accomplishment. Let's give a warm GSW welcome to our speaker today, Mr. Bobby Fuse Jr. Good afternoon. I have only a minute. Only 60 seconds in it. I didn't choose it. It's forced upon me. I can't refuse it. I didn't seek it. I didn't choose it. I must suffer if I lose it, give an account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. What are you going to do? with your minute. To the distinguished members of the faculty, ladies and gentlemen, the officers of the African American Male Initiative, I am delighted to be here today. A little nervous, but I'm delighted to be here. Georgia Southwestern College is a very, 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 very special place in my life. You see, my mother, was the first African American to be a part of the faculty and administration of Georgia Southwestern College. 
my sister was among the first two graduates to be conferred with a degree from Georgia Southwestern College. Most recently, one of my other sisters was a part of the last presidential search. And I remember very fondly participating in the community choir and singing the Messiah at Christmas time here at Georgia Southwestern College. I also took a class between my freshman year and sophomore year at Morehouse College because my grandparents back then, you know, they didn't want you to stay in Atlanta on the sum in the summer too young. So I had to come home. And in the process, I took uh, a couple of courses during the summer. If I might take one quick moment, and if I can get his cooperation, I'd like for Mr. Anderson to come down here. Mr. Anderson, as you well know, is a senior lecturer and associate professor, and uh, also has become a good friend of mine. Mr. Anderson, your hard work in founding and sustaining this organization for the success of young people is not unnoticed. For your friendship and for your welcome and sometimes unwelcomed questions, I want to take a moment and focus on you. Your dedicated faithfulness in the face of increasing you can't do that circumstances, you, sir, have created an air of expectancy here at Georgia Southwestern State University. And you have created in these students who enter here the will to be successful and do well and graduate. You expect nothing less of them and you demand it. You have encouraged hundreds of students to perform well. And for that, you have taken your important job as being very serious. Therefore, we stop, sir, just to say you are a blessing to this campus and to the university system. A true blessing from God, and we stop right now just to say thank you, sir, and much obliged. <laughs> On being content in the three dimensions of a complete life is not an original idea with me, but it is one I picked up some 30 or 40 years ago. It's a compilation of something I read from Dr. King in his Trumpets of Conscience, when he talked about the three dimensions of a complete life being very similar to that of a triangle, which is befitting for the math, for the math professor, I guess. I also combine that with uh, some philosophy from a great philosopher, Tupac Shakur, when he talks about being a rose in concrete. That's what many of you are facing today. Hundreds upon hundreds of times you're being told you can't do this, you won't do this, you're a woman, you're a girl, you're from South Georgia, you're from Leslie, DeSoto, Swainsboro. And for one reason or another, you can be discouraged if you let that get in your head. And in this moment I have today, I just want to share with you one or two things that I hope that you will remember about that triangle. You know what a triangle is. It's that figure, three-sided figure, that has length, breadth, and height. When I talk about length of that triangle and a complete life, I want you to think about the length of life, that dash between the birthday and the death date, length. For some, that length is long. For others, that length is short. For some, that length is rickety. For others, it's broad. But the length of life 
in, 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 in developing it, one has to be consciously selfish. Yes, it refers to your life. Not mine, not his. Your life. Developing the length of life and the quality of a length life. Longevity, yes. How long? Yes. But the quality of that length. What are you doing for yourself? You cannot help others. You can't teach others. You can't do anything for anybody else until you get yourself straight. One cannot soar with eagles either while one wallows in the gully with turkeys. And for those whose cares have been our concern for so many times, it's on us as individuals to be the very best individual person that we can be. Sure, we can be great members of organizations, we can be great church members, choir members, frat members, athletic members, ball field, but it's best to develop oneself so that you will be able to be positive and be a strength to those around you. When you're working on yourself, Sometimes you have to give up some things. I propose that there are about eight that I'm working on myself, as old as I am. Self-rejection. How many times we talk ourselves out of things before we even share them with others? We need to give up negative self-talk. We need to give up criticizing others. We need to give up being a people pleaser because you cannot please all the people all the time. We need to give up our fear of failure. We certainly need to give up procrastination in this final exam week, I'm sure. We need to give up holding grudges. Have you noticed sometimes the person you're holding a grudge against going on about their business and not worried about you. We need to give up expecting perfection. Only one was perfection, for perfect. So as you go through life, developing as an academician and pre-med scholar, teacher, just remember in going that a rose can grow in concrete and that you can surpass those things and those barriers that are placed on you. Don't quit. No matter what, don't quit. When things go wrong, and they sometimes will, when the road you're drudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low most of the time and the debts are high, and when you want to smile, but you have to sigh. When cares are pressing you down, and down just a bit. Slow down, check yourself, rest if you must, but don't you dare quit. The width of life, width. Triangles have height, have length, Width and, and height. The width of life is the broadness. How wide is your life going to be in order for you to be content? How encompassing others. This is when we become charitable. It's all about everybody else. How many people we can put in that hood? What can we do for others? The actual real meaning of life is what can I do for my fellow man, my neighbor? And he may not be someone I know. A people with no sense of history, I have been told, move just like a tornado, a torpedo in the water. A torpedo seeks to destroy 
and be destroyed. So you want to be broad, you want to be helpful, and you want to be concerned about your fellow man. With the tightness of the world today, instantaneously, we become a community with events in outer space, in the universe, around the planet Earth, and certainly events across the country. Instantaneously, what affects one affects us all. Therefore, we must develop a conscious community spirit and a community of understanding, especially the part about us not all being the same. Back in the day when I was a young man, we used to talk about the melting pot. I'm a social studies teacher. And we were taught that we live in a society that is a melting pot, a soup. I've grown to learn that we are quite different from that. I prefer to say we live in something that, we would, that I would like to describe as a stew. I'm sure you know the difference between a soup and a stew, right? The main difference is in a soup, everybody, every ingredient loses its characteristics. And it becomes something different than what it started out to be when it was put in the soup, in the melting pot. That's not who we are. That's not who we are. We need to stop trying to make everybody in the world be like me and you. But let's try this. Let's accept people as a part of the stew. For in a stew, you just simply can't have a stew without some carrots, potatoes, green beans, beef, roast beef. But in a stew, a good stew, all of those ingredients do what? Maintain their original identity and their characteristics while contributing to the betterment of the stew. You just can't have a stew with meat, beans, and no potatoes. It can't be done. So try, if we can, in the width of that triangle, let's try to be a little more inclusive. If we don't know what an ISIS is, or if we don't know what an ISIS are, or if we don't know what an ISIS is, don't you think we ought to try to find out? Don't you think we ought to try to find out the width of life? That's the part where I talk about being concerned and voting. Ladies and gentlemen, I've never seen so many people complain about local government, state government, federal government, when 40% of us don't vote. It is simple. We have a responsibility for anything that is going awry in America, Sumter County, Swainsboro, Donaldsonville, anything that's going awry, we have a responsibility to it. Either we vote it some kind of way, or worse, we did not vote. Of all the Georgians in Georgia who are eligible at 18 to vote, do you know only half of them are registered to vote? And of that half, only half of them, one-fourth, actually go to the polls and vote. 
And I've got some other figures, but I don't have them right with me right now. But it's, it's very important that we vote beyond the president of the United States or the governor of the state and not vote for the dog catcher, sheriff, and people down the ballot. It is crucial, ladies and gentlemen, that you learn the habit of voting and voting your conscience and your belief such that you will not have to be enslaved to other persons' beliefs. Things that you know aren't right, that you have been given direct authority to have dominion over. Vote. Set high expectations. You want a great country? Vote a great country. You want a peaceful country? Vote a peaceful country. You want an activity and a party city to go to live in and be educated in? Then vote that way. Because it must be born in the mind, Dr. Mays would tell us, that the great tragedy in life doesn't lie in not reaching your goal. The tragedy lies in having no goal to reach. It isn't a calamity to die with dreams unfulfilled, but it is a calamity not to dream. It is not a disaster to be unable to capture your idea, but it is a disaster, ladies and gentlemen, to have no idea to capture. It's not a disgrace not to reach your stars, but it is a disgrace to have no stars to reach for. Not failure, but low aim is sin. Not failure, but low aim is sin. Then in the triangle, Besides length and breadth is the final attribute of a triangle, and that is height. The height of a triangle here symbolically represents your relationship with God. That's the way I have to say it because that's the way I know it. Now let me make myself clear, as an academician, as a political scientist, as a taxpayer in the state of Georgia, I by no means mean any slight toward any other denomination, religion, or belief. All I'm saying is you need to have a belief. I don't care what it is. You've got to have something that boards you up, something that sustains you in the midnight hour, something that keeps you company up and down the highway, greater than you. You're great. You're in college. You're somebody. And you know you somebody, because last week your grandparents and your aunts and uncles made sure you understood that you were somebody. But you need to recognize a superior being who can create a world, put stars in the sky, keep deer in the ditch roll planets around like marbles, and they don't bump into each other over millennia. You need a master. I have mine. I know what it'll do for you. If you don't have a relationship with a supreme being, hurry up and get one. Because I guarantee you, there are people that will be marching in that graduation line next week 
who can tell you that there is a God. That test wasn't canceled just because the professor chose not to give it. Your tuition wasn't paid just because your parents have money. Know that there is a supreme being helping us and sustaining us. Thursday, recently, Thanksgiving Day, somebody didn't have somebody where to go on Thanksgiving, and they killed themselves. You got to have, in times of low depression, somebody to turn to stronger than me. I'll help you as much as I can. All you got to do is call me. But I'll have to call on somebody else to help us. You need that undergirding. You need that power that comes with serving an almighty God. You will have struggles in this life, in this content, in this com contented life of yours. You're going to have some struggles. But when you overcome them, you're going to feel very great about yourself. If you think you can go through without having struggles and problems, and some people do, I assure you they are accomplishing nothing. For Frederick Douglass has warned us, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom yet deprecate agitation are men who want crops without plowing up the field. They want rain and thunder. They want rain without the thunder and lightning, I mean. They want the ocean without the awful roar of its many waters. Our struggles, ladies and gentlemen, to have a complete life may be a moral one or it may be a physical one or it may be both, but it must be a struggle. Power can seize nothing without a demand. It never has and it never will. So therefore, seeing that we are encompassed around about by so many men and women of history and so many witnesses, let us run this race that's been set before us. Let's run this race with the hurdles that have been placed, that have been placed in the lanes. Let's run this race with the potholes in the lane and run it with patience and perseverance. Yes. I've come here today to try to tell you it's a wonderful life to have a contented life using these three dimensions. However, I must leave you with this thought. How in the world can you have a contented life in a world like this? How can you be content with all of these can't circumstances that include murder and jail in our everyday conversation? How can you have a contented life when all the advertisements and images you see do not include images of you? Yesterday, I read a survey, I forget the name of the family uh, that did the survey, but still, after 50 years of fighting in the civil rights movement, 59% of the people in this country still believe that race is our biggest issue. Look like we ought to be able to do something about that. 50 years. Today is not only World's World AIDS Day, but it, uh, it is also the, is it the 60th anniversary of Rosa Parks starting the Civil Rights Movement? 1954. And we still, and we still have racial problems. 
I know I'm at Georgia Southwestern College. I don't need to go into my political science teaching, but you do know Mrs. Parks was not sitting in a white section on the bus, don't you? You do know she was already sitting in the colored section when she was asked to move. Because the custom in Montgomery at that time was that not only you sat in a white section and a, and a colored section, but should a white come on board, as a black, you were required to move two seats behind them. And that is the objection that she had. She was sitting in the colored section. Please make sure you know that difference. We have some problems in this world. How are you going to be content with medical care as it is? How are we going to be content with the mental health care that obviously half the folk we're running into sitting beside in here right now need some help? Somewhere to go to. All this killing ain't just bad people. Some of these people just need some mental help. Early on, early on. How are we going to be content, Mr. Fuse, with poverty, agriculture, trade? How are we going to be content when Georgia has the worst record for anyone dealing with prenatal birth and postnatal care? We have work to do, young people. And, you, and, and, and the mantle is passed to you because you're able, gifted. You can solve these problems. You can stop this kindergarten to prison pipeline if you want to. You can do something about health and recreation if you want to. Yes, we cannot be content, will not be content, until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. I want you to know two things. One, I am absolutely overwhelmed doing the best I can to be cool, calm, and collected because I am so happy to be here with you today. The other thing I want you to know is this. I hope that you'll accept my wish that you will become so sensitive to the disorder and the chaos that exists in this world that you will not be able to sleep at night until you have raised your hand to fix it and to bring about the beloved community. I remain your humble servant always. Right now, it is the final week of school. Next week is finals. And I even asked my students, what have you been doing since August the 16th? What have you been doing since August the 16th? This semester is coming to an end. Your, what was your goal at the beginning of this semester? Was it just to pass all of your classes? You had other goals? Well, we are down to the end now. And I hope everybody, everybody is successful in passing all of their classes. But you have to do the necessary things that you're supposed to to pass your classes.
I would like for everyone to stand up. The motto of AAMI is social responsibility and academic excellence. I would like for everybody to repeat after me. Academic excellence, academic excellence. social responsibility. Social responsibility. We also have a saying that we do at most of our meetings. Spread the word, Spread the word. Across, the nation. across the nation. This is going to be, this is going to be a, great a great generation. Thank you.